Good afternoon hunters and welcome back to the Gunners Guild. Today's topic of the lecture is going to be Lunastra. The name instills fear into the hearts of many hunters, and up until recently, I was one of those hunters. After many runs, I finally learned how to Lunastra, and I want to share that info with you all. Hopefully you learned something that you didn't know already, if not, well then oh well. First, we're going to cover Lunastra's hit zone data. She is very unique compared to other monsters in that she's actually hard to damage. Every other monster in world is susceptible to damage on the face, and most have hit zones of 45 on the legs for melee so you can get the trip. Lunastra's head hit zone is 40 for cutting, which is most of the weapons. This means we can't use weakness exploit on Lunastra's face, reducing your overall crit rate significantly. This is a double hit on cutting weapons because most use Master's Touch, which lets them never lose sharpness on a critical hit anyway. The loss of weakness exploit means that they have to change their gear significantly for the Lunastra fight, and they lose a lot of potential DPS, or just time, by having to sharpen or run protective polish on their weapons. Bludgeoning has a nice hit zone on the head, which is great, especially because Lunastra is pretty vulnerable to the KO buildup. The problem is that that's the only place where blood weapons can hit effectively, and if you fought Lunastra before, you know that sitting on her face isn't exactly easy. If you look at the other values, you'll notice that the other spots that are good for cutting weapons are the wings and the tail. To exploit this, you will unfortunately have to damage the back legs, as will pretty much any other melee weapon. It's got a pretty horrible hit zone for pretty much anything and everything, but it's the only consistent way to bring Luna down. And we're going to get into that a little bit later. Ranged weapons have it a much easier in this fight since the head is still a weak zone for Gunner, and the tail is as well, and for the most part, you should be able to hit at least one of those regardless of Luna's position. Gunner's Bane is coming later in the attack section though. Across the board though, Lunastra is very weak to ice, so for most weapons, Ice Element will probably be the best thing to bring. Dragon does a lot of damage as well, and getting Dragon Seal on Lunastra is also very important, which we'll cover a little bit later in the staggers, so don't discount Dragon weapons. From here, I want to move on to the spawns and starting the fight. I'm mainly talking about the Blue Prominence optional quest and the Arc Tempered Lunastra fight. Throne Taker falls in here as well, but you typically engage Luna out where Nurg is, so we're not really going to worry about that. The area Lunasha usually resides is Zone 11 area just past the Teostra and Azralosa spawn. She will walk up to Teostra's Area 12 and move over to Area 9 and then 8-ish under Camp 1. For general purpose hunting, we're going to focus on engaging Lunastra in her spawn zone in Area 11. It's quite a run from the nearest camp over at Zone 16, but fighting Lunastra here is strategic and you'll see why soon. As you engage Lunastra, like any other monster, you're going to get a roar. However, Lunastra is very aggressive and will usually spot you from far away before you can engage her, even if you're behind her. So you may get a spotted roar which doesn't actually cause you to like cover your ears before she does her enrage roar. When she roars, it's pretty much identical to Teostra. You can check the paw positions or the wing position for the Q to do the roar, just like Teostra. The audible Q is still usable since Lunastra has a slight roar buffer just like Teostra. When you deal 860 damage, which is about 9% of her HP, she will enrage roar. This is where things get complicated, especially for Arc Tempered Lunastra. So let's talk about her staggers. So here is Lunastra's stagger values for each of her zones. Unfortunately, Elder Seal values aren't exactly known to me, so you're going to have to kind of wing that part. Capcom decided to make Luna a huge pain in the ass, so unlike all other Elder Dragons, staggering Lunastra's head does not cause her to topple. She will stagger, yes, but that is all. In order to get the topple, which is very important for melee, you have three options. You can break the horns when she's at less than 20% of her HP, you can get a dunk, or you can stagger the hind legs. This is awful because her hind legs are small and it's very easy to miss and hit the tail, wings, or body instead. It doesn't help that her hind legs have the worst hit zones ever. Now unlike Elder Dragons, if Lunasha's horn break when she's staggered or toppled already, she does not gain the instant topple on wake up like Teostra does, so it's effectively wasted. Remember that when she's at low HP. So you need to keep up the staggers, the topples, and the elder seals when she's enraged, because if she ever manages to enrage again while currently enraged, she will automatically do her supernova, which is basically instant death for gunners and the end of the run if it's an arc tempered Lunastra. You don't want this at all. Keeping her staggered and topple stops the timer for the nova to build up. The elder seal removes her aura until she enrages again, so it pretty much negates it entirely. So like most hunts, it's a DPS race, speedrunning or not. The dunk is obviously amazing for keeping damage up, but it's not exactly for you to control. Lunasha does two moves that can be dunked. She can either do her jump attack, which has a very small window where Luna is actually considered airborne, 
and the stagger will cause a dunk. The other one is where she flies up above you and does like her fire breath and her tail swipes while she's up above you. Typically she'll do two attacks and then dive down at you. If you can shoot her out of the air or put barrel bombs down and let her dive into them, you can get a dunk that way. With the dunk out of the way, let's move on to what makes her so annoying. Okay, so stagger and toppling her is pretty easy peasy, right? Well, no. Lunastra is filled with attacks that prevent you from doing exactly that. Her bread and butter bullshit are her two blue fire attacks and her tail. Her straight line of fire and the wing flap of fire leave large piles of blue scorched ground and cause a large amount of wind pressure in that area. These scorched grounds quickly deplete your HP while you're standing on them and it really sucks when you get hit by the wind pressure and guess what? You're standing on those spots reeling back from the wind pressure and losing HP. Great! Obviously the front line she'll do when you're in front of her and the side wing flap she will do when you're on the side. I highly recommend equipping a windproof charm for Lunastra as the three ranks of windproof it provides is all you need to withstand those attacks. Shields can block the pressure, greatsword can tackle through it, and bow and light bowgun can usually just evade it if you stand far enough away, but even still, I recommend using the windproof charm just in case, because one wrong move and you're totally toast. Like literally. Some of Lunastra's other annoyances include her tail and her tail and her tail. She has a very notorious tail that reaches almost 180 degrees and she can rotate while she's doing it which makes it very difficult to dodge. It's actually not that hard to iframe through it if you're ready, but you have to be ready for it. If you're doing an attack and she decides she wants to do a tail, you're boned. Otherwise just get really far away, like really far away. The last really annoying thing about Luna is her fire pools. Anytime Lunastra does an attack near a blue scorched ground, it turns into a wall of fire that shoots out fire in that direction and these things can reach deceptively far. They eventually fade over time, but some Luna AI really like to just spam fire attacks and keep the entire zone filled with firewalls. These walls block all projectiles, which screws over gunners entirely. Though you can't technically use water ammo to shoot at the base to put it out, but like, come on, who's gonna do that? Lunasha is not even weak to water, so only the niche gunner can do this, and you would have to bring ammo that you wouldn't use for anything else but shooting the walls. The rest of Lunastra's attacks aren't really that bad, in fact, they're really nice to help keep your damage up. She has a typical paw swipe which has no range unlike Teostra, a bite which again has no range, and a very long wind up fireball that isn't particularly threatening unless there's a lot of blue fire patches on the ground. Her regular fire attack's really easy to avoid, also assuming she doesn't have a lot of scorched ground near her. The angled line of fire has a nice spot you can sit in, and the spinny fire attack doesn't actually reach very far so you can just kinda walk back a few steps and be safe. One other odd thing about the Lunastra fight is she does a build up roar animation type thing. Uh, of course you've seen it. Basically it's not a roar, it's not an attack, but she'll sit there and charge her aura and giving you time to damage her. And you need to damage her and cause her a stagger, because if you don't, she's going to automatically get her second enraged if she's already enraged, which means she's going to supernova you. Don't let this happen. This is why you need to keep staggers up, and Alicia gives you opportunities to stop it. So that's Lunastra and basically all her attacks. However, there's one other major aspect that influences this fight, and that is the zone transition. After one minute of being aggroed in her zone 11, she will disengage, roar, and move to Teostra's zone. Lunastra will fly up and move over to the next zone, so you can easily set up a dunk when she flies. You can also beat Lunastra to the zone transition spot marked by the ledge right here, and she will engage you right there. Typically she'll do her two attacks and then dive bomb you, so you can set up your bombs or plan for a dunk right there. However, if she's not enraged, she will often just land and then enrage after she spots you. Now it may not seem like much, but this transition zone is very, very important. TSC has been doing a lot of work on Lunastra, dissecting her and everything that makes her tick. You can lure Lunastra to the zone transition, mount her and dunk her right there, and if you deal enough damage here, about a thousand to get her to enrage or. As she gets up, if you're on the top ledge and she's on the bottom ledge, she will automatically zone transition to move to you since you're technically in the other zone. So you can force the transition and then proceed to dunk her until she dies. I'll provide a link to TSE's page in the description because he's really gone all out on her and if you want to learn how to do the Luna dunk, watch his stuff. Outside of this, there's nothing really special about Lunastra, which seems weird saying after all that, but she does function a lot like Teostra, just kind of cranked up to 11. So thanks for watching people, I hope you learned something that will help you out in your runs. Good luck out there in whatever game you're hunting in.